you from Psalms 136. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made the great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. And I know we just came out of Thanksgiving, so I know y'all ready to praise the Lord, right? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this Thanksgiving season. We thank you for this time of celebration as we enter into this time of, of Christmas and worse and all this, you know, joyalty and everybody being nice to one another. But Lord, let it be from our hearts. Let it be real, God. Lord God, we thank you because you kept us. You're bringing us to the end of another month, almost at the end of another year. And you have been merciful merciful and long-suffering and you allowed your mercy to endure forever for us oh God because we need you Lord God not that we're worthy not that we deserve it but God we thank you hallelujah that you kept us you allowed us oh God to even enter this place today we enter with thanksgiving and praise we come before your presence oh God humbly Lord not that we deserve it not that we can build our own selves up but God you are worthy and greatly to be praised. We thank you for keeping our family members even thus far. Realize that we may have lost some, God, but you still are faithful. You still are good. You still are worthy. And oh God, we say yes, Lord, to your will. Have your way today in our service and we glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. We've had turkey. We've had dressing, beans, macaroni and cheese. And we got to come to church today and put some energy in this place. Come on and put your hands together. <laughs> Our God was great to us that we had the ability to have a home to go to, a place to cook, a place to eat, a place to invite others. And we all told Jesus, thank you, am I right? Man, he's an amazing God. You know, it could have been another way. It could have been some tough times in there. But our God saw to it that we were blessed. Hallelujah. I was blessed even watching the Cowboys. I didn't care nothing for it. But I enjoyed myself. Are y'all ready? Come on, find somebody. Tell them, tell them, sing. Say to your neighbor. God loves you. <laughs> God loves you and so do I. Come on, find somebody else. Whoa, turn to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor. God loves you. God loves you and so I love 
tell y'all a secret man I love welcoming people to church I don't know if you know this because I come down I come down not the pulpit you know just because it just feels so much better down there than it does up here but man I was glad when they said to me today come into the house of the Lord are y'all ready come on Mr. Lewis let's put those hands together the Lord for he is oh give thanks yeah yeah <laughs> come on oh give thanks yeah come on oh give thanks yeah. Come on, oh, give thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, give thanks. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, come on, everybody. Oh, give thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Cal. Oh, give thanks. Come on, say for he is. Yes, he is. Oh, for he is. Oh, come on, take it up. Oh, give thanks. For he. This is a good time for us to put our hands together. Come on. Whoa. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, for he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. For he Yeah, yeah. Come on, God's house. For he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For he is. Come on and say. For he is. Whoa. Come on, put those hands together. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. For he is worthy. worthy. Yeah. Jesus Christ is worthy. He yeah. is. Yes, he is. He's good. Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, God's house church. Praise the Lord. Listen, I want to share this with you real quick. Uh, some of you know I went to a, 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 a concert over the weekend, and there was almost 15,000 people in an arena. And they had the, the greatest liberty to just worship and have a good time. And if they can do it, 15,000 people, I know that God's house church can do the same. Can we not do that? I know we can do it. Can we put our hands in the air? Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's make the scene in God's house. Come on. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on. I want everybody to put your hands together. Come on. Above the heaven, and there's glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven, and there's glory above the nations. Say, give God the highest praise, acknowledge Him in all your ways, and all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the Lord is high above the heaven. The Lord is high above the heaven. And is glory above the nations. I hear you, God's house. The Lord is high above the heaven. And is glory above the nations. Say, give God the highest praise, acknowledge Him in all your ways. And all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Halle, Hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heaven and the glory above the nations. Well, if the Lord's been good to you, shout it! Yeah. And if you come to praise the Lord, shout it! Yeah. And if the Lord's been good to you, shout it! Yeah. Praise the Lord. Shout it, yes. Yes. Oh, say The Lord is high above the heavens and the glory above the nations. Well, if the Lord's been good to you, shout it! Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you come to praise the Lord, shout it! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if the Lord's been good to you, shout it! Yeah. I know he has. And if you come to praise the Lord, shout it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on. If he's been good to you, you should put your hands together. Come on, God's out. Here we go. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 Give you honor. 
let's make some noise for God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know our God has been good. And I know he is worthy of every bit of praise that we give. Isn't he a wonderful God? Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, sometimes tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Sometimes that taste comes out a little rough sometimes. But I know one thing for sure. Whom he loves, he chastens. And we are so glad to be here today. Our leader is here in the house today. Man, we had a great revival this week, didn't we? Didn't the Lord do some wonderful things in that revival? Man, I can't wait to use my towel. I can't wait. You know, I'm actually thinking about it right now. I'm going to go home and put my bills on the table. And I'm going to put my towel on top of my bills. And I'm going to watch God do a wonderful thing for me. Because that's my belief. I believe for sure that God has given me something to help me out. I just got that one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well... Can we put the hand together for our leaders as they come? He and his lovely wife. I know she's going to give us the, the welcome while she's here. Lord, everybody, you may be seated. We thank and praise the Lord for all of you being here this last Sunday in November. We're almost at the end of a year, but we're, God has been so good to us. And we just thank and praise the Lord for all of you. And we have some first-time guests, and we just like to acknowledge them. The young lady that's right here, I, I had talked to her. She was back there in the back. I told her, I said, move up a little closer. And she did. Amen. Can we thank God for her? Are there any other first-time guests that are here? We'd like to acknowledge you if you are. Amen. And also, we like to acknowledge all of those that are viewing on your mobile devices, and we invite you to come and be in the sanctuary, to be in the service. Amen. But for those of you that are here, we thank and praise the Lord, and we pray that you felt welcome when you came through the door. But if not, this is a formal greeting to let you know you're always welcome here at God's house, where everybody is somebody, and Jesus Christ is Lord of us all. This is a church that believes in worshiping and praising our Lord and our Savior, for he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords and he is worthy of all praise so we want you to join in with us today as we lift up the king of glory and if you're looking for a good church home you're in the right place check us out well praise the lord everybody this is a day the lord hath made let us be glad and rejoice there I don't know about you, but I'm still excited about what God is doing here at God's House Church and for the testimonies that I've been hearing. I thank God for you that are viewing in, for you that are here today. I guess some people came for the revival and said I had enough church this week, but I thank God for you that are here. Didn't God do some marvelous things? Some marvelous things. I went last yesterday to see Sister Pearlene Dawson at the Rehabilitation Center and I took one of the anointed cloths and I gave it to her and she laid it on I prayed for her. When I go see Sister Pose, if no one's taken one, I'm going to take one to her and just put it somewhere near her. Someone asked me how she was doing. I talked to my son. He was out there, I think, yesterday. Said so she's about in the same condition. She knows that we're there. She'll squeeze your hand, but she can't talk. He said she'll kind of moan when you say something mm, or something. But you know, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. 
And we serve a miracle-working God. And I'm praying and believing God's going to raise her up. We're going to see her in her same place whenever he says so. But if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, we'll hear from heaven. And I thank you for those that fasted prior to the revival. I thank to you for you that came, came. Bishop Brooks said he was um, really blessed by coming here because some places you go, people don't receive the word so readily as you do. And I was pleased. It took a step of faith for me to do it, but my helper, Lynetta, stand up, Lynetta. She's been assisting me lately. Demetra, I apologize. She helped me, but I was thinking about Lemetra the other day when I God told me about coming back from Colorado, how that she, uh, Lynetta, how that she passed away. She was our dear friend. But I thank you. She helped me with this here, and we got it together. It was a step of faith because people don't have church on Tuesday, and y'all don't come on Wednesday. <laughs> And I will be honest while I'm here, amen. So maybe this is the start of you coming out on Wednesday. Elder Shelby, our assistant pastor, has been teaching wonderful classes. And I know he would be excited to see all of you that were here on Wednesday. So I'm not going to take it that you can't come and you at work. I'm going to say that I'm going to encourage you to come. Does that sound all right? I do apologize for the heat. We had it on. But when you have boilers in old church, sometimes things happen. But if you get involved in the service and clap your hands and run down the aisleways, I think you'll get warm in a little bit. Amen? All right. God bless you. Uh, turn with me to Luke chapter number 17. I'm going to stay in the same vein as we've been doing uh, these last few weeks about giving God glory. For you that didn't get one of the towels that were anointed with oil, um, see Lemitra after service and she'll... Uh, give you one, all right, if you want it. But in the 17th chapter of Luke, I've used this passage, but I was thinking about it, boy, and I said, this is in the same vein. And I'm going to read verse 11. I'm reading from the King James Version, and I'm going to read verse 11 through verse number 19. And you don't, please be seated, because I'm going to read several verses. You don't have to stand. I'm going to read several verses. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go your way, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, only one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at the feet, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? And they're only found that return to give glory to God, except this foreigner, stranger, Samaritan. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I found out down through the years, I used to evangelize like um, Bishop Brooks when I was younger. I traveled throughout the country. And you could tell a church by how they worship God. Back then in the older days, before every service, we would have praise service. Lou, you remember that? We had praise service. Anybody know what praise service is? Testimony service. It was a time that they would let the saints get up and say, praise service, testimony service is open right now. And people would get up and they would praise God for something he's done. He's done for them maybe that week. And, but many times also they would tell their business. A lot of times. 
but they would have that praise service. And what I would do when I went to a church I was not familiar with, it'd be my first time there, I would make sure that I would go out doing, we call it praise and worship now, song service and testimony service. And I'd get a good feel, a good feel of the spirit of the church. And when a church was praising God and glorifying God, I wouldn't have a hard time preaching. The word of God would just flow. People would get saved and people would come to church. But when you'd go, when I would go to a church and I'd go through the praise service and testimony service and song service and nobody was clapping, everybody was just looking, I said, oh God, I'm going to have a hard time. And sometimes those churches had to push, push, push to preach because the people weren't involved. But the churches where people praised God and glorified God, things happened. And God's spirit anointed would usher in. If we want to be a church where the presence of God is just here, it takes more than just the singers. It takes more than the organist and the drummer. It takes more than me preaching. But it takes a congregation that lift up their voices, that praise God, that's not afraid to glorify God. Can I get an amen? amen. But it's strange. It's strange how much God does for us and how little we glorify him and thank him. And the church said, amen. amen. I'm thankful that we had the revival. I'm thankful for the spirit. But I don't want the spirit of this revival, this fasting we did prior to it, to die. Can I get an amen? amen. Some people will we have the evangelists come in. They'll get with him. They'll get in the service. They'll come. But when the evangelists leave, they leave too. They lose their praise. They leave their attendance. It's because they're looking for a one-time excitement. But living for God and walking with God and praising God is a continual lifestyle. Can I get an amen? Now let me ask you one thing. Just give God a hand praise. That's good. That's good. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. But let me talk here from this text here. I was thinking here as I was reading this here about the spirit of the age. We live in an age that in a time when people are not thankful. They're not grateful for the things that God does for them. And I can understand why. I was talking to some of the elders over here, to uh, Elder Fields over here and somebody else. We were talking just a few moments ago. And we were talking about when we came up. We're older than some of the younger people and how it's easy for us to be grateful for many of the small things that people take for granted. Can I talk about some of the small things we overlook that many take for granted? How many of you got up this morning and said, Lord, I just thank you for health and strength? Don't take it for granted, amen. Ask Sister Posey. Go visit Sister Pearlie. But how many of us do that? How many of us got up this morning and said, Lord, when we went to the refrigerator, said, Lord, I thank you for orange juice or whatever you drunk, or grapefruit juice or apple cider, whatever you, whatever you drunk this morning. But thank God. I, I, I get up in the morning this morning. I'm, I'm an early riser. I'm a late person to go to bed. I'm an early riser. I got up this morning before the alarm went off at 530. I woke up about 515. I got, went up in the bathroom, I combed my hair, I brushed my teeth, and brushed my teeth, and I went into the kitchen, and I made a cup of coffee. But before I went into the kitchen, I stopped by the thermostat. We've been having problems this month with the thermostat. We've got a $200 plus thermostat that I didn't know the man charged me for it. A few years he put on but it hasn't been working. And been getting up with coal, we've been cold off and on coal. We finally got it fixed. But I went to the thermostat and I turned it up from 72 to 74. I wanted the house good and warm when my bride got up to do what she did. And you know what I said? I said, thank you. I thank you. Can anybody besides me remember when you didn't have a thermostat? Some people can remember that. 
And now they got it. They never say thank you, but the small things. I told you, you know, the porter toilets. I've told you in times past, the porter toilets. That's a good name for saying an outhouse. But I remember when we had those buildings in the back of the house. And it wasn't close because of the breeze that would pass by and bring things with it. But we'd walk down about maybe from here. Well, it wasn't quite to the back of the church, but three-fourths away to do whatever we had to do. On a morning like this, uh, what the Bible says, what thou do, do as quickly what Jesus told Judas. We did it quickly. There was no hesitation. I thank God for tissue. Oh, you know, can I be real today with you? But I got a spirit of thankfulness in me. Tissue. I told you before. Remember Sears catalog? You'd read a page in the summertime, and then you'd tear the page. If you want to know what I'm doing, ask me after church. The reason why I did that. But now, and Charlotte has it so fixed up, we have this beautiful little decorative thing where you put the tissue on it, you know, and you got four or five tissues. And I look at them, I say, praise the Lord. No more. But couldn't afford toilet tissue. But things people take for granted. Now, young people, I understand uh, why you don't say thank you because you've always had these things. But I come up in a time when we didn't have those things. We were talking about eating, food. Uh, we've got choices now. But back when I was coming up, I was talking with Sister Dawson uh, and Brother Dawson. Sister Dawson had eight in her family. Brother Dawson had nine, and I had ten. So we had a good conversation yesterday. She said, Brother Bishop Shelby, she said, now we went to the table. It wasn't you had a choice. You ate what was put before you. No choice. Or you didn't eat at all. I said, I know what you're talking about. You didn't have to cook something. Now, I know people that close to me didn't have that problem. And they're not thankful when it comes to eating. Whatever was put before you, you ate without question or you didn't eat. But now there are choices. We have choices. Oh, Thanksgiving dinner was marvelous. My daughter-in-law, who gave me the scare of my life cooking the turkey, came at the last moment that I thought and cooked the turkey in 45 minutes. The meat was falling off the bone. My other daughter-in-law brought ham. It was that kind of ham that was so moist, full of juice, that when you, it just fell apart in your mouth. And then the macaroni and cheese that uh, Sister Joanne brought, it was so chewy, so full of cheese, and all the ingredients that when you chewed it, you had to pick it out of your teeth there. Ah, oh, we had everything. Sweet potatoes that Sister Shelby made. Oh, they was just dripping with the juice and just so sweet and palatable. Everything was there. But I remember a time when we didn't have those things. When I looked at it, I said, thank you, Jesus, for the small thing. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Somebody say, thank you, thank you. And what I'm trying to say here today that be thankful for what you have and for the small things. Stop concentrating on what you don't have and what you do have. Can I get an amen? Yeah, you may not have a Cadillac, but oh, you got a Mopez. You may not have a Mopez, but at least you got a bus pass. So thank God for whatever you have. If you're thanking for the Mopez, you're thanking for the bus pass, he may give you a car later on. Can I get an amen? Somebody say thank you. Say thank you for the small things, Lord. That I overlook. Thank you for the loose of use of your limbs. I've been challenged the last few months. I was thinking this morning, I was talking with the elder, how that I was sitting on this pulpit a few days ago, weeks ago, doing a funeral. And oh, I was, I broke out and I began to itch so bad all over that I had to go to the emergency room. Had bumps all on my arms, every place you could think of. My wife said, I think he got leprosy. That's why I'm preaching this sermon here. She said, now when you come in the room, cry unclean, unclean. 
Yeah, well, she was joking with me there. But, you know, but I was sick with it. Had to go there. But now you know, they gave me a shot in this hip here, put something in my mouth and whatever, gave me some cream. And now, you know, I can walk. I don't have to stretch no more. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But that's a small thing. Small thing. But, you know, you can come so uh, uh, acquainted with God's blessing and take them for granted that you forget what God is doing and you don't thank God for the small things. If you don't thank God for the everyday blessing, for sight, ask Elder Smith, for hearing, my friend, being able to walk, uh, you won't thank God for the big thing. But you know what? I want to be sensitive to God's small things that I can see, that I can hear. I'm an elderly gentleman, but look here. Man, I get around pretty good. You know, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it, but it's all because of the goodness of the Lord. God hasn't only been good to me, but he's been good to you. And the church said, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Been challenged, been challenged on every hand. And you know, everybody don't know what you're going through. But you don't have to tell him, but you can tell him that you recognize what he's done. How many said, Lord, I thank you for my health. The use of my members there. I thank God for insurance. I, I went to the doctor the other day and they diagnosed me. They took some blood there and they gave me some creams and all these shots here. And you know what? I didn't even get a bill back. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There are people that my friend in the emergency room right now, they've been in for hours waiting to be looked upon but I walked right in got the shot got the prescription and no bill thank you Jesus it always hasn't been like that don't take God for granted the reason why a lot of couples are not together now and don't have harmony in the marriage they take one another for granted but I made up in my mind I got a jewel of a wife. No woman can be better than Sister Shelby. She looks good. She walks good. She dress good. She smells good. And she treats me good. I'm going to let her. I appreciate her. I tell her all the time, Charlotte, I love you. God gave me the best thing when he gave me you. I thank God for you. That's why she's still with the kids. I don't take her for granted when she cooks my beans puts neck bones in them a little salt and pepper now she don't eat beans but I eat beans I said Lord these beans are good she said you want some more but I appreciate her I don't take her for granted and that's why she's still with me men when is the last time you complimented your wife that when she walked through the bedroom, you said, oh, baby, you look good. If you don't say it, somebody going to say it. Especially you guys that got wives at work. And man, them guys on the factory can be cutthroat. It's a little bit better now because of the law. But back in the day, Lord have mercy. I worked in a factory. Well, there was a few women. In fact, Charlotte worked in the department for the government where we made uh, airplane engines and airplane parts and tank parts. She worked up front for the government. And I'd go up for lunch. Had to walk by from here to Walmart to get there. The boss would give me time to go up for lunch a little time. And she'd walk out, we'd go get a break. And I'm with my honey bunch. And them guys didn't care. Woo, baby, woo. <laughs> I want to jump over and punch them in the eye. But they were too big. And I said, oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. If I don't give her some, ooh, ah, you look good, somebody going to do it for her. But husbands, appreciate your wife. Don't take it for granted that she washes your clothes, that she cleans your house, take care of your babies. Because if you don't say it, the first guy does say it, She's going to turn around because it's foreign to her. But I said, if a joker comes in my house, try to get my stuff, he's going to have a hard time because I give her money, I wash her car, 
I give her gas, I buy her clothes, and I compliment her. Somebody shout hallelujah. But take it for granted. Ten lepers here. Jesus coming through Samaria. Read your Bible. At least three times in the book of Luke, Jesus talks about going through Samaria. There was something about Samaria that Jesus said, I must go through it three times. Most people don't realize in this text that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. In a few days, he would be crucified. But it comes through Samaria. There was something about Samaria that touched the heart of Jesus. Is because the way that people looked upon the Samaritans. They were a mixed race. When the Jews were exiled, during the exile, many of the Jews married the Syrian women. So they called them a mixed, impure race. And the Jews that didn't intermarry, they had nothing to do with the Samaritans. They were outcasts. They were looked down upon. They couldn't come into the synagogue. So they built their own temple. They only believed in the first five books of Moses. That's what they read. But they were God's people. They were Jews, but they had intermarried. They were mixed Jews, but they were Jews. But the real Orthodox Jew have nothing to do with them. They felt they were better than them. But the Bible says Jesus on several occasions dealt with the Jews. You might remember that Samaritan woman that sat by the well. It was Jesus that asked her a drink. She said, you've been a Jew, asked water for me because they had no dealings with one another. It was that parable that Jesus spoke about uh, the good Samaritan. Remember, the priest came by, the bishop came by, the apostle came by, saw the man lying out in the street, he went on the other side. A Levite came by, he did the same thing. But it was a Samaritan, this outcast, looked down upon, cut off from the Jewish society. It was the one that picked him up, put him on his donkey, took him to the inn, bound up his wounds and told the innkeeper, said, when I come back, if I haven't given you enough money, said, uh, I'll pay you what it was. But here's what Jesus talks about. But now the Bible said there was 10 lepers. And leprosy, if you read anything about it, it was a hideous disease. It was the most dreaded, feared disease in the ancient world because there really was no cure for it. There was no ointment, no liniment that you could put on, no pill that you could take a shot that they could give you to cure leprosy. It was a type of sin. Ten men had leprosy, but the Bible talks about this leprosy. Today it's called Hansen's disease. They tell me in America about each year about a hundred people get leprosy. They have some cures for it, but years ago they didn't have it. Worldwide they say there's about 2,000 people a year that get leprosy, mainly in Asia and Africa. Many of these places, they don't have, my friend, medical attention given like we do here in America. I found out something else about leprosy. They say down in Texas, there's a little old animal called an armadillo, dillo. You ever heard of it? They say he's a carrier of this Hansen or leprosy. So if you come by an armadillo, don't touch him because you might get leprosy. Leprosy is something that you cannot, they say, uh, get by just uh, contact with people. You have to be around them for a while. It's something like this COVID. Droplets that come from sneezing and coughing. Those are the ways that you get leprosy. By shaking a hand, being around somebody, you can't get it. But once you contact it. In those days, you were in a deplorable condition. These men, when they were uh, diagnosed as having leprosy, the first thing they had to do was leave their families, leave their business. They had to isolate themselves from everybody else because of this contagious disease. Think about it for a moment, these 10 lepers. There probably was a businessman. There might have been a preacher in the bit. A miss. They might have been a wealthy person, but they had to isolate themselves from society, leave their families, leave their church, leave their wife, leave their children, and stand out somewhere. When somebody came by, like my wife said, unclean, unclean, they had to cry it out because of this, because of she thinking I had leprosy. 
So unclean, unclean. They, they didn't wear anything on their heads. They had to wear torn clothes to identify them that they were unclean. This was the law of Moses. These 10 men, my friend, a Samaritan among the other nine. Normally that Samaritan wouldn't be with them, but misery and leprosy brought them together. Isn't it something how God can get his people together? He'll let a tornado come through the community and wipe it out. He'll let a flood come to the community and wash it out. And people that would normally get together down in a shelter talking to one another all because of a common misery. But I don't want God to send misery and trouble my way for me to get with my brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? Can I say amen? But they were together now. They all had leprosy, this incurable dreaded disease. But they knew something about Jesus, the Samaritan and the nine Jews. They all cried out, Jesus, have mercy. I want to tell you something. If you won't cry out to Jesus when you get healed, if you won't cry out to Jesus while you're well, Jesus knows how and God knows how to get you to cry out. Can I say amen? I don't know about you, but while I got two good hands, while I got good feet, while I have good sight, I'm going to lift my voice and say, Jesus, I bless you. Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I glorify you. I don't want God to put sickness on me to make me cry out. Somebody shout hallelujah. Think about it for a moment. You think they said when they saw Jesus afar off, Jesus, Jesus. No, no. They knew that Jesus or nothing. Their only hope was Jesus. And I'm going to tell you that a viewing, I'm going to tell you here today, it's Jesus or nothing. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you don't have nothing. But Jesus, they cried out, Jesus, Jesus. I thought about leprosy. And these 10 men standing out there, whoever they were, the community would look at them and say, yeah, they got to be sinners. They did something wrong because they associated leprosy with sin and a curse from God. And I wonder where they got it from. It's not in the Bible. But I begin to read about Miriam. Remember Miriam, Moses' sister? The Bible says Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And some commentators must be prejudiced. They won't make her white. They won't make everything but black. But I believe she was a black woman. Because Moses was saved. Or dark-skinned woman. Miriam got upset. I want to tell all you people. All you people. Look at me. Don't you get upset if your child marries somebody you don't approve of. Whether it be light, bright, or not just right. It's not your choice. It's their choice. Amen? It was wrong, it was sinful, what she did. And the Bible says because of that, God put leprosy upon her for seven days. Moses pleaded, Lord, don't let her stay like it. He knew what leprosy, remember, he was the one that God told him how they should respond to a leper, but seven days. So maybe the Jewish people from that associated anybody that had leprosy with sin. But let me give you another instance, another reason. Remember King, the king? I mean, what's his name? Uzziah or Uzziah? The Bible said he was 16 years old when he took the throne. He was a prosperous king. He was a godly young man, 16 years old. The Bible says as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. But here's what the Bible says. When he got lifted up with pride. He had a tremendous army. He had built the towers. He had cattle, everything that he wanted to have. And he got lifted up in pride. You know why God don't bless some of us? Because we will be just like Uzziah. As long as he was small, he did what God said. But as soon as he got blessed with, with pride and things, he got lifted up. Some of us, we can praise God as long as we have a normal job. We can, pray, we, can, we can give tithes as long as we don't make too much money. 
But soon as some of us get good jobs, making six figures, oh God, tithing, that's too much. Too much. Some of us can be humble and praise God as long as we don't get a position. Let some preachers preach one sermon and he's ready to start a church. He's ready to go on the evangelical field. We had a man, you know him, a young brother in this church. We had a guest preacher like today. Our guest preacher, he called me last minute and said his car broke down. He couldn't make it. He said, it may come next week or whatever. I say, you know, okay. But he's passing through. This man preached one sermon. The guest preacher couldn't come. And I said, well, you go on and speak in his behalf. You said amen to him. Praise the Lord. He called Elder Smith and me. The next day he said, I'm leaving the church, Bishop. I'm going to start me a church. One sermon. One sermon. So God can't bless some of you. Maybe the reason why God can't bless you, you got to check your attitude. He knows if you give you that six-figure job, you, you, you do everything but pay your tithes. And some of you do that. Give you a car. You drive it everywhere but church. Give you a house. You stay home on Sunday morning, you know, dusting the furniture, sweeping the floors. Am I preaching? But I told God, Lord, I'm going to show you with the small things. I'm going to be faithful. Be faithful. But as long as he was small, he prospered. But look, well, he's the king. Rich, famous, powerful. But he got out of himself. He said, I'm going to go into the temple and I'm going to burn incense like the priest. He knew better. He gets the censers, goes into the sanctuary. Azariah, the priest, said, King Uzziah, you know you shouldn't be in here. This is reserved only for the priest to burn. And you in here. He said, leave out it before God gets you. But he was insistent. So Azariah, he got 80 more priests and they forced him out of the house of God. But while he was there, prideful, threatening the priest, the Bible said leprosy smote him in the forehead. This is the king. And the Bible said he was a leper from the day that he died. He was cut off from the house of God. Maybe the children of Israel, when they read the story of Miriam, how she was cursed for rising up against the preacher, the prophet, her brother, read about Uzziah when he rose up and went into the house of God, disobeyed God in a place he shouldn't be and smoked with leprosy. Maybe they associated leprosy what a person had had it was sinful. I don't believe everybody had it that was sinful, but he had it. But the Bible says they were lepers, but they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy. And the Bible says Jesus just spoke a word. He didn't say, come here, I'm going to anoint you with all. Take one of these prayer cloths. I'm going to lay it on you. But he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. Now, no, all of them had faith for Jesus to heal them. All ten. All of them were obedient. All ten. But that's where it stops right there. The Bible says, as they went, they were healed. As they're running. Their fingers, if they were had fallen off, they were restored. Their face was cleansed. Whatever. He said, go show yourself to the priest. But only one. And I thought about that one. Can I share something with you? You remember the parable of the ten virgins? Jesus talks about it. It's a rapture parable. Remember there were ten virgins? Only five were ready when the Lord came and ten were left. They say 50% of people 50% of the church will be left back from that parable. Can I give you another thought here? I wonder if Jesus is saying one out, one out of every 10 members in the church 
whom he blesses with houses, cars, health, and job. Really praise him. The other nine are just like these nine here. If there's 10 people a row, only one of them are real praisers and really worshipers. Could that be? Could that be? Because the majority of God's people, the majority of churches, really people don't really glorify God and really thank God until you make them. Or you'll do it here. But he's not talking about why you're at church. But what do you do when you're home? When you get in your car, say, Lord, I thank you for the car. I look at my tires sometimes. I say, Lord, I thank you. I remember, we called them years ago tennis shoes. Them tennis shoes. They said, man, you got some tennis shoes there. He wasn't talking about the one on your feet. talking about your tires because they were slick. They called them Maypops back there. Maypop any time. I said, Lord, thank you for my tires. Get in my car. There's no smoke coming out of the exhaust. Lord, I thank you. Anybody have one more junkers, you know? You wasn't saved, but you had to lay hands on the car. Lord, let it start, Lord. But thank God. I thank God. I thank God. You know, I, uh, some people said, you know, Bishop, I'm praying. But he was really brought up the hard way. I thank God for the hard way because I can appreciate the good way. Somebody say thank you. But 10 of them. But only the Samaritan. The one that was an outcast. And this and I'm through. Here's what I was thinking about the Jewish people. The book said here in the King James called him a stranger. The one in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, I think about 14, it says, speaking of the Gentiles, anybody of the Jews, and you were cut off from the commonwealth of Israel, alienated, but now you've been grafted in. In other words, the promise of Abraham working to the Gentiles back then, they thought. But now it is. He was the one that was an outcast. Couldn't go to the temple. Couldn't worship with them. He was the only one that came back to worship the Lord. And here's as I close it. Jesus said, weren't there nine? Where are the nine? People got good jobs, good money, take vacations. But don't tie, don't thank him. But this, this person that shouldn't have been one praised him, but the Jews are like some of you as I close. The Jews felt that because they were Jews, they felt entitled. I really believe. They felt entitled. Remember, we are Abraham's seed. The average Jew felt in that day that he was going to heaven because of the fact that he was just a Jew. He thought his nationality, his race, gave him entry into the kingdom of God. So because they had this spirit of, you know, pride, they didn't have gratitude. Do you feel that way? But I want to say this here. From here on to Christmas, after New Year's, there's a good spirit in the world. People are praising God, inviting people over. You know, we'll say thank you, Jesus, every now and then. But after that, after that, saints, let's keep a spirit of gratitude, thanksgiving, and praise. You want God to move in your life? Start praising God. I know it works. If it works naturally, it'll work physically. Let me tell you, brothers, how to get some good macaroni and cheese. Just start praising your wife what you have. she make you a cup of coffee. Woo, that's a good cup of coffee. It's good and hot. You made it just the way that I want it. Start praising her for the cup of coffee. Start praising her for the bowl of cereals that you, ooh, you got these cereals just right. You put just enough milk on it. Praise her for the piece of toast. Lord, I thank you for the toast. Oh, you put just, now, you know, I like a lot of butter on my toast, baby. You put a lot of butter on it. Watch what happens. Next thing you know, honey, what do you want? What do you want me to cook for you? Well, I don't know. Well, just tell me anything you want me to cook. Well, I would love a steak. What kind do you want? A ribeye? A T-bone with the bone in it? How do you want to cook medium rare? well done you want a lot of pepper and salt on it all because you start thinking for the small things amen amen 
I know, if, if, if my wife, and I've tried this, baby, don't you listen to what I'm saying now. You close your ears. I, I do it with Charlotte. I told her, I said, Lord, every time I turn around, you taking my handkerchief, my, my towels. I wash my face, put it down. She washing it again. All because I said, baby, you sure take good care of me. You sure keep my towels clean. Now, I can't keep a dirty towel up there. You know, I want to see a dirty towel in now, you know. I don't even smell it. It need to be washed. All because if you can do that with a person, what about God? Lord, I thank you. And you know what I do when I pray? This is my prayer bench right there, right in the corner most time. Sometime I'll go back there, but I pray there. You know what I do? When I start my prayer off, I thank God for salvation. For salvation. I'm going to live a whole, I'm going to live real long, long, long. I'm going to be in good health and blessed because I thank you. I said, Lord, I thank you for salvation. Then I start thanking him for, you know, you. I thank God for you. If you follow the steps of Charlotte and I, why we love you and why I get mad at people when they fool with you because, you see, when saints are not your saints, not your children, you treat them any kind of way. And me and Sister Shelby know how it is to be in a church with Elder Shelby, Delisa, Darren, and a few more. And when I see you, I said, I thank God. We don't, we, we, we don't have the numbers that we had before right now, but they're coming back. But I thank God for every one of you. Some of y'all have problems, amen, and I know it. Some of you do wrong, and I know it because I do wrong and have problems too. But I still love you, and I still treat you right. Because, in fact, we remember when we didn't have nobody. It's hard leaving the church with 1,500 people, going to a church on Sunday morning, 8, 10, 15 people, driving past Santa Fe to get to church, going Wednesday, Friday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And when I see you, I said, thank you. Thank you. So many things I thank God for. Thank you. If nobody thank God for you, Sister Shelby and I do. Right, babe? Right, babe. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thank you. I thank you. Saints, what have you been taking for granted? When it comes to God, your health, eyesight, ears, good teeth. I said, Lord, I thank you for my teeth. I only got three that belong to me. Rest of my bought, but hey, they mine. And Lord, I thank you. I remember I had in that dental work all I could do, man. God didn't know what I had a plate in there. I get home, I take that suck out of her. I ate macaroni and cheese mashed up and mashed potatoes and soup for a long time. A long time. When I was able to steak, I said, Lord, I thank you. And I go to me, I look at them. Thank you, Jesus. Small things. Small. Y'all, you know, I'm, I'm serious. Small things. Small things. But we take it for granted. Demon, tell my daughter-in-law, I'm going to stop taking you for granted. Now tell him the same thing. Tell him I'm a, you told him? I want to hear you say, I'm a, honey, I'm going to stop. See, y'all pray for them. Y'all pray for them. See what I'm talking about? See, I, I, I can tell you something. I've been in this thing for a long time. I thought I was doing good to yesterday in marriage when I talked to Brother Dawson and Sister Prelly said they've been married 63 years. And you know what? She looked at him and still smiled. I said, old man got something going on for him. But there's appreciation, appreciation, appreciation. Then as I close, saints, let's appreciate one another. And don't take one another for granted. Because there's no people like God's people. Amen. And if y'all think, anybody think that I've taken you for granted, come to me. I'll apologize and I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for that one person that went back, Lord. I'm really praying for those, the nine, that got the same blessing, that were in the same predicament but got so caught up in what they got 
their healing, their deliverance, the raise, the house, the car. They forgot about who did it and who gave it to them and forgot to give thanks. But Lord, God's house church is a thankful church. And we're going to be more thankful and grateful in the days to come. And we're going to start, Lord, by thanking you for the small things. For Lord, if we can't bless and praise you and thank you and be grateful for the small things, I don't believe you're going to send the great things. But Lord, we thank you right where we are today. I thank you for every soul that's here, for those that are watching, for those that support this ministry, for those that witness, for those that share. I thank you, Lord, for this church being grateful and giving even in our need. Those, Lord, that took clothes, Lord, to individuals on the blood blows. For those, Lord, that gave baskets out. I thank you, Lord. For those that pray and support this ministry, I thank you, Lord. And I pray your choice is blessing upon them. In Jesus' name. Give God a hand, praise you. I'm You're in one or two groups. You're like the one or you're either the nine. There's no in between. Either you're grateful and thank him for what he's done or you put in that category of the nine. Writers say one out of every ten people in God's kingdom are the ones who really are thankful and give him praise. The others, they feel I'm not grateful. Is there anybody here today? Anybody here today? A viewing. They want to give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Some of you listening. And some of you here. Maybe some of you here. God has been good to you. You know you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be in the condition that you are. Because God's goodness he took you farther than you thought you'd ever be, given you more, healed your bodies, made ways, protected you. And all you did was say, Lord, I thank you. That one time I forgot all about it. All about it. But the Bible said the goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance. We look back and see how good God's been and say, Lord, I know you've been good to me. Now I'm coming to give my life to you and the rest of the time you've given me I'm going to serve you. If that's you, you need to come. Anybody want to join the church, you can come right now. Come right now. Come on, couple. We, had a, we got a couple here has been coming, and they want to join the church. Give God a hand, praise. They're already saved. They know Jesus, but they felt this was the place God wanted them to be. They've been coming. They're faithful. As I, they were coming, I saw them fill out an envelope. They talked to me. They said, we, we, we're supporters of, of the kingdom of God. And I think, come on up. Come on up. Bring them on up here on the stage. Anybody want to be baptized? Anybody want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Give, come on. Come on, church. Give God. If you're glad they're coming, give God a... Can you make... Help her up there. They're precious people. They're precious people. And you may be seated. I'm going to give them a word. I want to say something. He's a deacon. She's a worker. Amen. My name is Sam Vincent. And uh, we'd like to uh, come forward today and join God's House Church with... Uh, with Christian experience. My name is Armanella Vinson and we would like to join God's House Church by Christian experience. Everybody that receives them, stand on your feet and give God a thunderous applaud for them. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? A 
here's what I want you to do. I want you to love. I want you to love them. Make them a part of your group, Amen. And when they come back, if you see them on the way out, shake their hand and welcome them. Amen. God bless you. They are officially members of God's house church. Amen. All right. Help. Help. Come, Charlotte. You may be seated. Get ready to go home. Announcements. Praise the Lord, saints. I have some upcoming dates for our children's church ministry. For the next two Sundays, they will be rehearsing for the Christmas program. So on December the 3rd at 1015, they'll be having rehearsal. And then on December the 10th at 1015, they'll be having rehearsals. So please have your children here on time. And for the adults that are going to help Sister Rhea with this program, would you please be there also? Because the program will be held on December the 17th at 10 a.m. That Sunday, we won't be having Christian education classes because we will be having the children's program, our Christmas program. So please uh, make sure you're available for the next two Sundays to have your children here at 1015. On Tuesdays, we have prayer here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. We invite you to come and pray with us. And then at 1130, you're able to stream our online Bible study, which is taught by our assistant pastor, Elder Vester Smith. Then we're back in the sanctuary on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for prayer. And immediately at 7 p.m., we have Bible study taught by our assistant pastor, Elder Damon Shelby. We have three areas of online giving. For those of you that do online giving, go to the upper right-hand corner of, your, of the, your device and click on giving, and you can do Givelify, PayPal, or Cash App. And Cash App is dollar sign, God's House Church. You'll see our logo. You'll know you're in the right place. And if you're mailing in your contributions, please mail them to God's House Church, 2335 Wyoming Boulevard, Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87112. At this time, evangelist Charlotte Walker has a message, or, or I should say an announcement that is pertinent to all the saints. Praise the Lord. We would like to invite all the women out on mark your calendars for December the 9th, second Saturday of December. We would like to do our end of the year planning and our celebration is a Christmas exchange, the white elephant exchange, and the price range for your gift is $20. I did make a flyer, but the price range is $20. So please, members of God's House Church, invite the members here and all of those that served and that were participating in our annual Women's Day. We want you to be here. We want to let you know how much we appreciate you serving and working. Everything that has transpired this year, please, and it is a potluck, so we ask everyone to bring a dish to share December the 9th at 11 a.m. from 11 to 1, I believe it is, that we'll be here in the fellowship hall, and we're looking for all of you to come out and help us to celebrate. And during that session, if you've got ideas or plans for the following, for 2024, we need to get, get those things on the calendar. So whatever suggestions that you have that you would like the women to participate in in 2024, start making yourself a note so you can present that at that meeting also. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give God a praise for that. We um, were able to start our roof, and we stepped out by faith, and we just gave, told a man, help us, and we gave him that that we had. All the officials came in my office a few months ago, and we got together, head deacon, all the deacons, and said, we're going to start this off with $500 a piece. Sister Shelby she gave $500, I gave $500, and some others gave $500. I'm gonna check the books. I don't normally do this here, but I'm gonna check the books and find out how many of our officials gave because they, they pushed me out there. I gave mine, and I'm gonna check it, make sure they gave theirs. I mean, I'm going to them personally. But I'm also asking you to help us. We came down a week or so ago, and my office had water everywhere. The roof had fallen in. Charlotte's roof, I mean, sealing her office, it had fallen in. And we, I'm glad that it didn't fall in on her while she was there. 
all because of the water. But we started. We had about $6,000 or so, and we put it towards it and told the man that we'd give the money because we had people that were faithful that was going to support and give. And I'm asking you above your tithes and offering to give towards the roof problem. We all enjoy this church. We all get the benefits from it. And here's the thing about it. Most of God's house church people are blessed financially. Are blessed financially. Now, the problem is releasing it. When you sow your seed into things like this, like when we gave the baskets, we gave, bought clothes for the people there, the Native Americans, God blesses you. I was hungry, and you fed me, naked, and you clothed me. And people said, Lord, when did we do this? Inasmuch as you've given unto the least, you've given unto me. And to think about it, it's like the ones that could do the most, many times do the less. And there are some people that $100 is really a strain, but they always want to contribute. And some, $1,000 would be like $100, but they fail to release. How many believe we're doing a good work? Now, if somebody asked me, said, where are the money going? First of all, ask the deacon. Ask them how much money's coming in. Look around. Look around. Look around. You think multi-million dollars are coming to this church? Lord have mercy. We're working on a shoe screen budget, budget right now. It's the grace of God many times that I, we pay our bills. But these men do it. But I thank you in advance. If everybody here that calls us a member of God's house church would just do their part, pay your tithes and offering, it'd make it so much easy. But only as one man came back out of the tent and were thankful for this miraculous healing, they say only about 10% of all Christians, whatever denominations, are tither. People are still giving dollars. People that could be given big bunny, sowing good seed, all these given dollars. And those are the ones that are always looking suspicious at these brothers. But I thank God for them. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you for the faithful people that sow. And I thank you for those, Lord, who are gathering faith. Lord, I pray that when they step out on faith, Lord, and obey your word, that you would open up the windows of heaven so wide that they'll be so blessed see such your goodness that they'll continue to give faithfully, continually in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell somebody, thank God. The third Sunday of this of December, we're going to have a holiday service here at 3 o'clock. Uh, the ministerial lines, they're coming here. All the uh, members of the, of the uh, ministerial lines churches, they'll be here on that Sunday at 3 o'clock. I'll be the speaker. Our choir will be singing. And so I'm telling you in advance, the 17th, put on your schedule. Minister a holiday service here at God's House Church. I'll be the preacher, and you'll be the speaker, singers. Will the congregation please stand? Turn to your left and follow the directions of the ushers in the rear. After that, service will be dismissed. Have a blessed day. <laughs>